Oh my good God. Welcome back to the channel. All right, four Loki is pushing. It's War 37. The re rewards are supposed to be buffed. I'd feel better if the visual was live, but they are supposed to be buffed. We're going for it. We've taken a season and a half basically off. A little bit of rest is going to show. Now, there are two main themes in this video. As I've told you in war videos, if something cool, interesting, unique, something to talk about happens, I will show them to you. There are stuff to talk about. And here are the themes. Here's going to be the major themes of this video. Uh, is one, I'm, I'm going to show you everything and you're going to see why we'll talk about it when we get to it. I really want you to understand what I was thinking and some testing that was going on. I think that might be helpful to folks as they go through their war fights. Uh, two is that a lot of you said you saw the power of Quicksilver, but he's very tough to play. I told you I was playing with him a lot. I felt like I was getting it. I soloed uh, one of the EOP bosses. I don't even remember which one anymore. I think it was Dragon Man with him. Really felt like I was getting him down. We'll see how that plays out. And then three, the Rentra season is upon us. The move supremacy, let's let's keep going. Uh, this is going to be path one in section one. It's that furthest outside lane. You see the Massacum is over time, reinvigorated, indomitable. I don't have a heal block champion. Uh, and as my BG leader clown said in his own video, when in doubt, just herk it, just herk it. I saw my assignments and my assignment said very clearly, do not uh, place Infuriate. So, all right, that happens when you hit one and then back or two hits and then back. So I was like, I'm not gonna do it. How am I gonna get going? And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> he's not hitting very hard, he being Overseer. Uh, he's not ramped up, he's not in Cosmic Mode. Remember, uh, so many people thought he did not hit hard. In fact, I did not like him uh, until I had to experience him for myself and I talked to B McG about it. And then I realized, no, once you get him in Cosmic Mode, he hits very, very hard. But he, being the Overseer before that happens, does not hit hard at all. Plus, I don't need to worry about his auto block that he gets after he throws his specials if I'm just hitting him with my own heavies. You can see I've got my six feet of strength like this. I think I'm going to... No, I didn't even respond with the heavy. Here we go. I'm just going to heavy. This fight was going so well. There was no reason to really mess with it. I do think I punish uh, a SP1 with the heavy at some point. Maybe I don't. Uh, but I was just really happy with this was going. I was trying to hurry up and get into... Uh, hosting one of the uh, Vega Battleground Championships, Illuminati Invitational. It's going exceptionally well. I know so many of you are enjoying it. Thanks for all the kind words and support and views and thumbs ups and shares you're giving uh, and supporting the contestants. That's the big one. So there we go. Uh, finish that off. We, he even gave us a nice little special concussion, which helps us heal up any of the block damage we would have been taking. Uh, I, that is just a beautiful strategy of Hercules. He is He's just that powerful, right? He, he's objectively subjectively the best champion in the game. Now, this is gonna be the first fight. This is the fight where I think people see Rentra and they're like, oh my good God. And the other one, it's not going to look impressive, but you will see it. So we've got this prowess, build up unblockable, severe specials, return policy. Uh, you can see bad things are gonna happen if we nullify the buffs. So I've been talking about this for months on this channel. It's probably close to six to seven, eight months. I don't know, whatever. For a very long time, where I've talked about the shifting relationship or the evolving relationship, between Cosmics and Mystics, right? Nullify is becoming a bigger and bigger deal. We saw it with Rincho, we saw it with, we're seeing it with Wiccan. Tiger was the one who really came on board and saw us. But you're seeing how much damage we're causing. We've already got him at 75, 71%. We haven't even thrown a special yet. Back him in the corner. Then I should end my combo on a light here, get my nice self root. That allows me to stack up the ruptures. You saw how they're up to 24. I will throw, well, I should have got out of the way. I didn't. I'll throw my SP2, which will explode the ruptures. If I had uh, over 10 of my mystical charges, which is the um, passive in the upper left-hand corner, then that would have been an unblockable special too. I took a hit to the face, which can happen when you get rooted there, right? And I still had 94% health. Rintra is good. Uh, I moved up to that scorpion there. My boy Trevor took it for me. I was a little worried about his evade mechanic. Trevor just owned it. I think he laughed along the way. Uh, and you can see, moving into this fight against Hyperion, this is important. I wanted to explain this one to you. So it has the feats of vigilance, blah, 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 return policy, which is a big deal. And then I can't think of the other uh, one there, but um, when they throw a special, it's only going to cost half. And so Hyperion's not only going to potentially be getting that big power gain that we all know he gets, but when he throws specials, it's only going to cost him half. I took this exact fight, I think it was last season, off season, it's all kind of blurs together because again, we weren't pushing. I don't even think I joined probably the last four or five wars. Uh, and it's gonna show a little bit. And I took those fights, so I remember taking this exact fight with Quicksilver and I was just so impressed with Quicksilver because remember Quicksilver can handle the falter too. If he's got his slow up, he can't miss. 
And so I'm going to this fight and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna kind of bait some things because Richard cannot uh, nullify. I can't get rid of the power gain that Hyperion has, but, but I can just prevent it as long as I have my neutralize up. And remember, Rinter, one of the things I love about him, there's a lot of things, is that his uh, neutralize is, I think, a 200% potency against Cosmic Champions. It's above 100%. So if there's like an ability accuracy addition or something like that on the node, it will still work. Keep that in mind. So here we go, and I'm feeling pretty good. And you can see I did do a little pause at the beginning of the fight to kind of read through the Conduit again. I haven't had a lot of experience with Conduit. But at this point, I'm feeling good. And then I saw that happen. And I was like, uh, he should be at like 50% health. What just happened? I mean, I realized there was a heal back por uh, portion to Conduit, but I did not realize, I guess, just how, how big. I mean, I realized it says, I think it says 80%, but I was expecting less, less heal back. And right about here in this fight, I'm, I know I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna throw one more SB2. I don't have a lot of ruptures up there, but I added some. And, uh, you know, I obviously my math was off because I thought I was about halfway through the fight, about 40%. I thought I was a full two minutes in. And I'm obviously not as I look back at it on the playback. And I was really unsure. And I started to wonder if I messed something up about the global, if potentially there was a, like an escalating effect to it. Like every time you knock them down, they heal more back as a percentile base. Uh, you can also see because of the ruptures that I have on him, he is getting willpower healing. That's 152 a tick, that's pretty good. Uh, and then, um, you know, when I hit him, he's healing that back as well, if I've recently knocked him down or he has those special debuffs on him. So right about here, I uh, really wasn't sure what was going on. I realized I had about 50% of his health down. Remember, I was a little concerned that there was a scaling effect potential with the global. And so I'm like, I think maybe I can just rupture him down. Let's see if I can get enough on. I am running the despair mastery. I thought potentially that would come into effect and help me out. Uh, but it doesn't really seem like it is. This is the fight I considered uh, speeding up, but I really did want to talk through with you war fights, war fights, and just kind of what goes through people's heads. Now, this is one I'm going to handle successfully. The next one's going to be one I'm not going to handle well. And this one, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to figure it out. You can see the kind of root mechanic there, uh, and it is actually helpful. I know it doesn't look like it would be. You see how little damage Rincher takes when he's like that, and then you're able to stay close to the defender. And so now I'm thinking, this I distinctly remember this, this rupture damage is not going to get it done. In fact, the pacing of the fight has slowed considerably. Worse yet, I am now, I cannot throw my SP2. I am now at the SP3. And so it should be very, very soon. I'm going to decide I need to throw it. I wanted to get Hyperion a little low on power if I could. You see, I decided I was going to go ahead and throw it. I saw did that little dance that can happen when you're trying to throw the SP3, but the uh, graphics aren't ready to let you do it. And right now, I am just hoping that it does not trigger the global. I did not know for a fact if it would or would not. Very excited to see that it would not. And I'm now going to just do this. Uh, the other thing I, I didn't talk about, I should have pointed it out earlier, but it's fine, is I'm using that neutralize to keep the power gain off. As soon as I realized, uh, one, it was one of my main plans throughout the whole fight. But when I realized that I was not going to be, get, uh, be getting those large SP2s, that became my whole goal too, twofold whittle him down him being hype and two do not let that power gain get off do not let a rupture fall off or a neutralize i apologize rindra is fantastic for that and that's what i want to point out we saw the fight against nova where he was amazing we got to see him do the big sp2s he's a total bull he takes a hit to the face almost no damage is done whatsoever now we're seeing he can't even do that huge sp2 this is a war fight and without it, he's still able to get this down. This is not, I think, the ideal use of Rintra. In fact, I'm going to talk to the Clown and the rest of my BG about it. I think I probably should have stuck with the SP2s. But his Neutralize is powerful enough. It's able to be kept up uh, enough against Cosmics. And in this Hyperion, he never got uh, the massive power that I needed to worry about. It was great. It was fantastic. I, I really love that. To me, that's a, such a great sign of a champion when they're not in their like ideal scenario like so i've shown you gallon in his ideal scenarios and how outrageous he looks but these other champions where they're not in their ideal situation and they still come out okay that's pretty good that's a great sign that's part of why i love rintra he's also much more simple to play if you get used to that self root mechanic now not simple to play. We're gonna go into this fight with against Quicksilver. You've seen me take this exact fight a million times. 
against Mangog. Uh, I have taken it in the offseason. I've sold it with Quicksilver. I still wanted to use my Indestructible because for me, one of the concerns is getting the power control under control. His uh, his wither it does not it's not as powerful as spider-man 99 spider-man 99 can really trivialize this fight a lot has to go wrong i've seen it go wrong but a lot has to go wrong and so this is what i'm going to show you uh i'm gonna go ahead and line up and get my whiplash going this fight's actually going tremendously i remember right here i just wanted him to throw his special we're good we're great i'm feeling good i even triggered dex uh getting the wither up there so i didn't trigger dex but you know the mechanic for it uh we're good I want to uh, punish with that to get the um, the faster momentum charges, I believe they're called, lined up. I think you get double. And then I wanted to throw my SP1 here. Now, I'm going to make my first of many mistakes. I'm going to go medium, light, medium, which will detonate my whiplash. Here it is. And threw that into my SP1. The reason I did that was because I didn't want to go to my SP2 and accidentally throw it early. That was not a fatal mistake. None of these technically were fatal. Some uh, maybe a little more than others, but you'll see the next one. The next one is the big one. This is what we've been talking about. But even here, still, I'm fine. You can see I'm trying to keep my withers up because uh, he was getting close to that two second bar power and his uh, second special would be unblockable. Uh, and I've now reached terminal velocity. I don't have a ton of whiplash, but that's fine. I think this is plenty. I can go ahead and throw my SB2, which is, was my plan. And uh, I was late. I was just late. I didn't think I was late when I threw it. It didn't feel late watching it back just now. It's clearly late. Uh, I am not going to blame the game. When I blame the game, I want it to be obvious that it was the game. I think I just threw it late. I haven't been playing my Quicksilver very much. I've really pretty much just been commentating on <laughs> Battlegrounds tournaments fights, which has been a ton of fun. Uh, but obviously, I've lost a little bit of my, my Quicksilver. Now, what you might be asking yourself, and I know what I was thinking at this moment in the fight was, okay, fine. The, the fight will just take another minute and a half. No big deal. I should just work to my SP3. I think it's pretty obvious this fight's not going to go well. So I should just work to my SP3. Uh, I, I, at this point, I know what I did. As I was thinking I needed to, I wanted to reach terminal velocity before I threw it. I did not need to do that. I, I, I think, as I stated at the beginning of the fight, the biggest concern is power, is that Mangog can get to his SB2, the uh, withers start to roll off like you've seen right there. And now I've used my indestructible boost. I should have thrown my SB3 here. This is almost painful to watch back because of how many errors there are in a row. But again, I want to show it to you. I think we can learn from it. If you're a Quicksilver player, uh, I still believe he is phenomenal. I still believe he potentially may be the best science champion in the game on his own. Scorpion is incredible. Spider-Man 89 is incredible. Mr. Fantastic is incredible. Cap, uh, Cap Infinity War is amazing. Void's amazing. We don't really need to crown a best, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how highly I still regard him. He is complex. There's a lot in the fight, and you don't feel like you're making progress, which I think is part of the problem. Uh, if I hadn't gotten hit there, then Mangog never gets to his SP2, and I don't have to throw this SP3, so that's also a potential saver there. Uh, but I think it's clear what's going to happen. If you've pulled him, if you spent a lot of those units and, and you pull him maybe in the future crystal coming up and you're just now watching this video, I still think he's worthy. I think this fight could have easily been sold. There was multiple times within that fight where I could have still pulled it out even with the errors that I had made early. And there's no one else who's gonna be able to handle that variety of fights for you. And that's what I like about him. So I wanted to show you a failed war fight. I want to show you a good one where you go in and things just don't go how you think they're going to go. And talk a little bit about Quicksilver there, and then just how amazing Rintra is. Um, we thank you to our opponents for a great match. Uh, Pops there, uh, pop up, <laughs> Sicky. That's a pretty good name, actually. Uh, they put up a heck of a match. We just came up on the winning side. Congratulations to the MVPs, Legacy B Manny and B McG, all competing in the Illuminati Invitational, uh, doing phenomenally, phenomenally well. In fact, Legacy is the only contestant who is guaranteed after two weeks guaranteed himself advancement into the next stage. So congratulations to him on that. B-Man and B-McG are on their way. They're putting up a heck of a show. Uh, I'm not gonna do the graphics after this one. It's just one war. And like I said, time is very limited for me right now. But let me know if you're like, hey, we really missed the graphic on who you've been using and how that's going. Obviously we can easily add that into uh, the other war videos. I'll continue to make them. If there's something interesting, unique, or something I think we can all learn from and be entertained by happens. I hope the war season is going excellently for you. Let me know, how much do you love Rintra? Thank you so much for watching. Take care. I hope you either learned something 
we're entertained, or even better, a little bit of both. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. See you.